Hey everyone, hope you're doing well, I'm Lucas and welcome back to another F123 League Racing video and today we have WR Round 5 I think around Mexico um, which took place uh, I think two days ago now as I'm recording this so without further ado we're going to get straight into it starting here in Q1 um, yeah, you have three to five business days before the first breaking zone, so you have a little bit of time to think about what you're going to do. Um, 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 um. Anyway, here we are at the breaking zone, getting onto the brakes now. Not quite getting enough um, bite into the first apex, but getting a relatively clean run through the uh, the rest of the apex. It's quite a tricky first set to, to get nailed, but I don't think it's as bad as in uh, previous years. Um, with how you have to sort of cut the corners. There's a little bit more optional uh, this year um, coming through now this sector two. Um, for some reason a sector that I've never never really excelled in um, whether it's driving style or just the way I have like my wheel rotation or my uh, brake set up. I have no idea but it's just never been a super strong sector for me. Um, but however coming towards sector three which is a sector that um, I can be quite strong in um, heading through here now, super easy to invalidate. We're actually extremely close to doing so. There, getting a bit of end, getting a good bit of rotation to get us through that hairpin. Um, we have just one more corner to negotiate. Very tricky to get on the power, even on this game wow. where it's a bit easier than in the past. Uh, oh, coming to the line now, um, a pretty sloppy lap overall, not quite hooking it all up, but it is more than enough to get us through very easily. Um, into Q2 with just the one run. Um, so yeah, cutting on now to the first run of Q2 um, starting the lap it's always weird because the delta doesn't always start the lap at the exact same point so sometimes you gain or lose time based on your delta once you actually get to the line uh, but coming towards turn 1 now will we get it better than the time before? Mm, not by much of anything, not very not very good actually through there um, getting a good exit getting a good exit out of uh, sector 1 but um, losing time compared to our used tyre run and again you can just see the front pinch a little bit with a bit of under rotation going into the start of sector 2 and we actually you know we're not gaining time whatsoever or in fact we're losing quite a chunk um, or we're half a tenth down compared to used tyres so not a great start to that but immediately here heading through sector 2 we are starting to gain a good chunk of time back as we go for the big cut through there and we get it nicely done and finally we gained a bit of time back but we've got a little bit of work to do here coming towards sector 3 not quite getting to the apex as you would like but getting really nice rotation through there really optimising that section into sector 3 one more corner to negotiate getting it down to third gear putting on the power keeping it tight and we get a nice oh. sector 3 to round at the lap that sector oh, is cracked in the last oh, yeah, yeah. what happened in the f I'm, mm -hmm. mate, it's, I'm not even kidding it's actually slower on new tyre through that first set you have no front yeah. so much understeer <laughs> well, with all that said we are yeah we actually didn't go back out um, as we wanted to save a set of softs for the race um, which was a little bit annoying because if there's a lobby restart you get a fresh set no matter what but um, yeah now for those of you who have a keen eye you will notice that I have actually got a slow top speed coming into this um, this final run, into Q3 even, and that's because we weren't in the, uh, yeah, we didn't get the setup right, quite frankly, um, which is very obvious, it's not even giving anything away, it was just plain and obvious to see that for anyone that paid attention, we were slower on the straights in Q3, and that's because I was having to make up for um, something that we quite frankly missed, which is yeah, quite embarrassing, but here we are now trying something new now, um, for the very first time, in Q3, which is always a interesting experience. Um, nice and clean though through the middle sector. Um, coming now to get DRS open, and where we're going to be coming into set three is a nine-eight split, which is nothing, nothing good. Um, you know, heading through sector three, getting that rotation, not quite setting up the exit perfectly though. But we get a horrible exit out of there. One more corner to negotiate, and we are going to try and tuck ourselves into the line. And what's it going to be coming towards the line? It's actually a How seven eight. If I went P1 with that, which wasn't a oh, clean yeah, yeah. or amazing lap, but right. obviously yeah, we didn't expect it to stand as yeah, Nico now um, improves by a few hundreds. But here we are now coming to the line um, to start our final attempt. And uh, yeah, we need. We felt like we needed a good chunk of improvement as we weren't really happy with that lap that we just done whatsoever. So. 
yeah, heading into our final run now. Um, we've got it all to do. So heading into sector one, we get a nice entry into turn one. Nice and patient through two. Getting on the power through three. Solid exit. And we are up now heading into sector two. So that is a good start to this lap in Q3. Heading into this braking zone. Do we get to the apex? Yes, we do. Um, how do we get the car rotated? Relatively well. Getting on the power, sort of gaining our time through that exit phase. But we get a bit too much rotation through there. So we did not gain as much as we would have liked through that right hander but heading into sector three now carrying a little bit too little speed but we get a little bit of yeah pushback from the curb and that's actually just cost us all of our time so yeah the curbing there actually costing us pretty much everything we had so now we've got a yeah now it's not looking good whatsoever and we've got it all to gain in this final section i'm pushing really hard into that entry and we've not got a we've not we've got a little bit of time to gain there one more corner to negotiate but it's just too much to do in a few corners and unfortunately that's team? all it's going to be and it's actually P4 not a good lap in oh, the yeah, end man, which honestly. was a bit harsh because I mean Crazy. we lost a lot of it just from the curb sort of grounding us out but I don't think quality's going to matter in this race quite frankly because it's Mexico it's a DRS slipstream fest here we go starting on the soft tyres we have our junior dev driver Otis ahead of us um, who's also on the same uh, strategy as us and then we have a bit of a mix um, around us as well um, so heading into turn one now we have cars go, trying to go around the outside Alfie on the mediums which is yeah, yeah a just a bit of difference absolutely everywhere um, oh, Wilson as you can see unfortunately picked up wing damage um, which was yeah, really really so unfortunate um, but uh, and that was no fault of his own either I watched the replay back but yeah we managed to get up into P3 ahead of Thomas Ruana who was oh on the hard compound tyre off the start of this race um, but yeah top three on soft then a hard then a medium this straight race this race has it all but we have a virtual safety car deployed now for whatever weird and wacky reason I'm not quite sure why how that happened but safety car is ending now we're just trying to move right on that safety car uh, that virtual safety car delta and um, yeah it's all good because we are off and away Nicholas Longy um, leading the way as we head on to lap 2 now and um, yeah now it's just a case of patience because this is a 36 lap race and battling and fighting at this early phase will do little to no use um, so the priority was to keep the energy high try and keep the tyres in a relatively good condition and try and capitalise on anything that came our way in the race so now heading on to lap 3 um, DRS has been enabled but we do not get it until the middle part of this lap due to the detection Nicholas has a little look oh, up the inside of Otis they actually have a little bit of a tag you can see me having a think about the inside but I'm bailing out the throttle because this makes no sense for us to fight you know when you're no, in lap 3 there is so much more to lose by fighting like as I get a little bit annoyed there by Alfie which is, was a little bit silly of me because Alfie was actually attacking it was just the line he took but um yeah, there's just no benefit for us to scrap like crazy and cost ourselves time. Um, it made, you know, limited sense for us. So heading on to lap four, now we do have DRS and as you can, and, and it's actually a double activation with a single detection point. And what that means is we get twice the, we get two DRS zones for the single detection that you have in sector three. Um, and you can see Otis there doesn't have DRS even though he was behind going into turn one. So that's a key oh, thing to remember. But Alfie here attacking us now, um, which I did not understand. Again, just coming back to the point of just, you know, not wanting to fight because I don't think there's anything to gain. But um, Alfie using energy there, um, not really sure why. Um, but ultimately it didn't really do much in the end but here we are now going for the move on Nico as you, as you can critically see didn't have the DRS and um, yeah we actually ended up benefiting out of that situation but ultimately it's not going to make the, the world of difference because it's lap 7 of 36 um, this race is such a, is such a long race and uh, yeah we are heading now into the lead now just naturally slotting ourselves in um, with the DRS just because it's so powerful on this game in general but Nico actually goes for a lunge on Otis behind which you can see in my virtual mirror ahead of us and now we have a half a second gap so yeah um, that's interesting you can see Alfie having a look up the inside as well so we're heading into sector 2 now of lap 7 um, and they're going to go side by side looking in the virtual mirror they are side by side fighting 
going into that sequence okay. and this is crucial for us because if you look at our delta now i mean alfie gets ahead in all of this as well on the medium tires and he'd actually used all of his battery by lap eight he'd used everything so what that means is we have a one point well now skipping onto lap eight 1.2 second gap now so we are clear why are you um, out in front of this race and that gives us an opportunity to try and get ourselves up and away um which was is very 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 rare in mexico and now we have 1.9 so this was going really well but that should have been a q4 oh, for as you can see a safety right, car <laughs> um yeah oh, know the plan. that's just oh, the way yeah, it goes uh, a bit unfortunate for us but good for wilson as well to you know give an honorable mention to as he obviously was, was out running there uh, um, I was fine for line now, yeah. uh, after the safety yeah, car yeah. on an alter, uh, well, on a so different strategy, on. but this means we are going to go into the hard oh, tyres and yeah. go to the end yeah. of yeah, this yeah. race now. Um, as well, practically everybody around us, as you can see, everyone's strategies are converging. Apart from Thomas Ronner, who actually was the biggest loser out of all of this, as he started on the hard. So that safety car was <laughs> terrible timing for him. Um, and this was really confusing because I oh, thought he went here, so um, which he didn't, um, well, but now he does, but as you can see he gets the wheel spin as the pit limiter, or the safety car limiter, unreleases itself, but now we're going to be attacking, going up the inside of Thomas Ronner now, going onto this lap 14, but as you can see we got a legal overtake on Thomas, and I believe, if I'm correct on this, that's because I overtook him before the safety car line, which was very confusing because I didn't know if the safety car line was before or after the stop finish straight but here we are now going up the inside of Thomas um, into turn 3 um, getting that move done which was really important for us to do because he was on like 14 lap old hards and we now defend on the inside heading into sector 2 um, covering the outside line as well uh, from Luke Smith um, and up into P2 now um, with Alfie Butcher in the lead so now we just need to slot ourselves in uh, and get on with it uh, basically, so yeah, onto lap 17 now, as you can see. For a bit too to no so on soft, as you can see, um, it was actually on a two stop strategy, um, so he would have to pit again. But now we take the lead on lap 17, and yeah, that is now uh, this is going to be a bit of a game of a cat and, cat and mouse now for the remainder of this race. Um, is it's just going to be a bit of a relentless yo-yo um, with the DRS and ultimately we were just going to try and save our energy, try and save our resource um, and yeah, um, you can see oh, Alfie yeah. there choosing to stay behind um, but Luke Smith have, just keeping, you know, in tabs behind as well so um, yeah, now onto lap 21, Alfie does decide to go for the move so we slot ourselves in behind. Back on 45. As, um, yeah, we just wanted to play the long game, not do anything too silly. Um, heading on to the exit of turn three now. But as you can see now, Luke Smith opting to go for the overtake. Now we do not have the ER, the DIS, but you can see I turned my energy off because it didn't really make sense for me to burn my resource to lose this position. But we actually get a bit of a tag on the right hand side, which you cannot see on oh, the on, the onboard. Warning, but bro. that warning there was incredibly away, unfair so given that we lost yeah. lord knows how much time um and albeit the off board doesn't show uh, sorry the on board sorry um okay, doesn't show bit. it um we got a bit of a tag on the right hand side which you might see at the end of the video if it's included in the um in the footage or not but i can't really remember but we actually got a little bit of a tag on the right hand side um, so that was not ideal, but regardless of that, that warning was a bit ridiculous because we didn't exactly gain absolutely anything. So yeah, to me that should be um, removable um, for if we got a penalty. What? Um, I didn't get it. I was in the third bit yeah, of the Luke Smith getting overtaken, then re-overtaken, I believe, as we skip onto lap yeah, 25. Sorry, now we are going up the so inside um, of Alfie Butcher, which we choose to bail out of as again just doesn't make sense for us to fight this we don't want to be wasting energy at this phase in the race you know you might be thinking oh well it's lap 25 maybe you want to start getting the elbows out no because fighting now can just bring the, I mean for a bit on a two stop you fight a lot it brings him into it um, you know this is it, there's no logical sense just to waste everything but now we are going to go up the inside of Luke Smith as he doesn't have DRS and it did make sense for me to get past him as we give him a little bit of a you know a run out 
through the turn one to two transition, and that is us into P2, slotting nicely in behind Alfie as they're actually got, they were actually momentarily three wide there behind. Um, so yeah, now ten laps to go in P2, good battery reserve, and we can just pace this nice and patiently behind Alfie Butcher ahead of us as Nicholas actually gets himself up into P3 behind us. On to lap 28 oh, now, we, do, we are probably going to retake the position on Alfie. Our battery is practically oh, yeah. entirely oh, full um, as we slot ourselves into P1 now um, on lap 28. And then on lap 29, short horror, Alfie's going to take it back. The shake and bake well and truly in effect now. This is just the most logical, but this is logical. This is effective racing. You know, you're managing your battery, you're you know, not costing yourselves race time. Um, and yeah, you're just playing the game all the way until you sort of have to start <laughs> racing towards the end. Um, and you can see 96% on battery, so we were very comfortable on our energy waiting towards the end of this race. Um, Alfie so retaking the position the onto lap 31. You can see a recurring theme occur uh, <laughs> here, shockingly. Lap 32 now. And yeah, we're going to take it back. This is getting quite repetitive. <laughs> um, but yeah. Now getting towards the crunch time as we are on lap 33 oh, now. So silly for me. Um, Alfie has a look up the inside, but Nicholas now getting closer and closer as well. Um, and now it was crucial for me at this point just to keep a bit of sixth sense going, just to make sure that I wasn't going to get um, overtaken here. So that's why you can see me use a fraction of ERS um, on the exit, as I didn't have the DRS ERS. Uh, sorry, DRS uh, just in general there. So I didn't want Nico to slingshot past. Um, Heading on to lap 33 now, we actually oh. get a little bit of a tag there from Nico, um, which is a little bit of deja vu because the exact same thing happened in esports. Um, just pure coincidence, which is quite funny actually. Um, but yeah, nothing, nothing bad there. Um, but yeah, heading on to lap 34, Nico I'm opting to use a little bit there. Um, as we now head to, well we have a little look up the inside of Alfie Butcher, I decide not to go for it and neither does Nico as it just didn't make I just didn't think it was worth taking the lead on this point Nico but we do get a bigger tap this time from Nico, um, which thankfully wasn't of oh, any um, detriment or uh, to yep. cost us anything, so it was all good, these things happen, I've done it in the past myself to be fair. Uh, but yeah, now on to lap 35, this is when crunch time and the tactics begin to kick in. Our battery is full, but we decide still not to make the overtake on Alfie Butcher, but Nico decides now that he does want to try and have a go at us. So we go we side by side, we leave him plenty of room on uh, the outside, but we actually get a bit of a tag here, and this I felt quite hard done by, oh, because fucking. that completely... Um, I mean, <laughs> trying not to swear, but that kind of ruined us there. Um, and that was flashing. really not good for us because this now puts us in P4 and out of the box seat to try and take the lead on the last lap, which was, um, yeah, it, I felt quite, uh, yeah, it felt, well, was not a great feeling because I felt quite hard, hard done by by that. Um, I felt like, you know, that's, it was just a little bit tough, but um, that's just the way it goes, unfortunately. Um, so, yeah, on lap four, uh, sorry, lap, lap four, because we're in P4 now with a lap or so to go um, and we actually have more energy than any of the cars ahead um, which is even more infuriating as we're not able to use it um, you know when you're in P4 you're sort of jammed in and yeah just trying to stay as close as we can to the cars ahead and um, yeah they're all using our energy ahead which means that we are not going to be able to get a move done on this straight so we decide to turn the ERS off here as we are not going to get an overtake done here it makes no sense for a waste of resource we need to try and put our chips in the for the late, later in this lap as Nico and Alfie get real really close heading into sector one um, Luke Smith um, just falling closely behind but now we activate the ERS Luke Smith starts the flash here um, but we're still too far back to make a move which is extremely infuriating Nico and Alfie now battling um, going side by side through sector one we get pinched again which kills our momentum and this is the most infuriating position to be in as all three of the cars ahead were in flashing ERS territory we had 40% so oh, this was such on. a waste, and we actually get a penalty there, which I do believe should get removed because of that 
ridiculous warning that we had ahead, but we're going to go round the outside of Alfie Butcher. We actually get squeezed off the track. There's nothing I could do to stay on the road there. I'm using the ERS to have a look up the inside of Luke Smith, but unfortunately, just not enough uh, momentum. And now we get the marbles going up the inside defending here, which kills any momentum that we have. So this is just one of those situations where you're damned if you do and you're damned if you don't. It's going to be P3. Um, subject to that penalty hopefully being removed which is yeah extremely annoying given we were in a fantastic position most of the race and we kind of just got um yeah a bit squeezed out of our chance for it um but that's the way it goes that's racing um do i like it no but is that the way it went yes um but yeah um i think a pretty solid race i mean qualifying was not really something i can look at too much given we were getting um uh yeah, we were having to change things mid Q3, which is, at that point, you might as well write off looking into it. Um, but the race pace was, again, very solid. Pace was, once again, good, but I think this race, you know, just didn't quite fall our way towards the end. Um, but that's that's the way it goes. I mean, P3 isn't too bad. Um, in the end, no matter what, I think, you know, the win was more than there with the energy. We had so much more than anyone in that last lap, but um, everyone can say shoulda, coulda, woulda. And I, it can be quite annoying hearing people say shoulda, coulda, woulda, so I don't want to be, uh, I don't want to lean on that too, mu too much. Um, you know, you win some, you lose some, that's racing. We live on and we fight another day. That's all good. So without further ado, I'm going to thank you guys for watching this video. Thank you so much for tuning in. I hope you enjoyed um, the chaos. Um, it was good fun to bring you guys this video. Like and subscribe for more of this content. Without further ado, I'll see you guys in the next video. Thank you very much, everyone. Love you all. Take care. Ciao.